Every team, every topic, everywhere, this is Believe. Yo, what's good, people? This is Trackstar, the DJ of Run the Jewels, and you're listening to the homies over at Zero Dark Nerdy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I am joined with... Ryan Saber, Captain Cleveland Browns, Cavs, Indians, C-L-E, till I die. And gracious enough to join us for another week, the one, the only... Ew, mama. <laughs> for that one sorry if you cringed (laughs) (laughs) we are glad to have you back love Um, all right ladies and gentlemen on this episode we are going to be talking about movie anniversaries for you know the year that is known as covid the never-ending year that is 2020 some big names out there big anniversaries we're talking 10 year 15 20 all that fun stuff I will actually go ahead and start this episode off with some honorable mentions out there. We all kind of did like our favorite, you know, top three to five, but some honorable mentions out there. Braveheart, mm. one of Mel Gibson's probably best, if not the best film I think he's ever directed and starred in, at least in my opinion, 25 year anniversary. Goodfellas, we did the Goodfellas episode about a month and a half ago, so be sure to check that out. 30 year anniversary of Goodfellas. And then we also have one of probably the more unknown gangster flicks of all time, unless you're a Biggie Smalls fan, King of New York. Frank with, White. With, that's right. With Christopher Walken playing Frank White. If you're a Biggie fan, as you should be, you hear him call himself the black Frank White at least once or twice an album. But a uh, very good film. Lawrence Fishburne, I believe, is also in that. He was Larry then. That's right. He was Larry Fishburne. So be sure to check out King of New York. Very underrated, kind of underknown, uh, incredible fucking mafia movie. Besides that, Empire Strikes Back, probably one of the greatest geek sequels of all time. Um, you know, to me, The Godfather Part Two is probably going to always be the best sequel of all time. But Empire Strikes Back, definitely up there as far as top sequels, easily top three. Uh, 40 year anniversary for that. And then Friday, the directorial debut for Ice Cube with uh, Chris Tucker, Debo, everybody else on there turning 25 years old. Did he direct it? I believe. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That John, was, that was John F, Singh. No, did, F. Gary Gray. F. Gary Gray. But yep, Ice Cube bad. wrote Ice it. Ice Cube wrote it. Yeah. That's right. If, you're, if you've seen Straight Out of Compton yes. towards the end of the movie, he's actually writing the script for Friday. So my bad on that. Directed by F. Gary Gray, who was a huge music director uh, right. before that. But 25-year anniversary for Friday. So on my list, we'll go ahead and kick it off. And it's funny, too, because this movie came out on September 15th, which is my daughter's birthday. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary is Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Mm -hmm. Done by Edgar Wright, who's also done Shaun of the Dead, Baby Driver, a bunch of awesome movies. Uh, Of course, it stars Michael Sarah, Mary Elizabeth. Oh, I always mess up her last name. (laughs) What is this? Winstead. Winstead. Oh, yeah. um, Who has recently played Huntress in the Birds of Prey movie. Which we're not really going to get into that, uh, but great cameos and performances by some Avengers on there. We got Brie Larson, Chris Evans, and then uh, you know the rest of the cast is pretty good too. Kieran Culkin plays the the gay roommate in the movie. We got Anna Kendrick as the best friend, and then Aubrey Plaza as Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> she literally just plays the same character her. over and over again, but she is so fantastic, Aubrey. Keep doing what you're doing. Daria, the live version Love of Daria. It really Love needs her. to be. A, yeah, a, yeah I, I cannot see anyone else. If there is a live version of Daria, play Daria besides Aubrey Plaza. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Yep. So fantastic film. A great adaptation from the comic books to where, you know, as you're watching it, you're watching kind of like a real life story happen, but with video game and comic book elements happening alongside of it. So very campy. Very, very fun movie to watch. I think we've seen it uh, at least half a dozen times. When- All right. So for my 20-year anniversary, I brought it up during our rom-com episode, which you can also check out. came out last week. High Fidelity celebrating its 20-year anniversary. We got John Cusack, Jack Black, Lisa Bonet. John Cusack plays a kind of down out on his luck record store owner. I believe it's called Victory or Champion Records, something like that. And it's got an amazing soundtrack, great cast. He kind of has to, you know, he's trying to reevaluate himself after losing his last girlfriend. 
So he tracks down his like last five girlfriends before that to see like what was kind of wrong with him, what's going on. And in, in the meantime, he's kind of trying to find his calling. He's not that interested in, re- in owning a record store anymore. The employees are having a blast, but he's kind of over it. And as the movie progresses, you see him kind of coming to his own as he's really just figuring out more about himself and what he was not just doing wrong in his relationships, but where he was kind of, for lack of a better term, failing in life. And then last but not least, I turned 40 this year. This movie came out when I was born in 1980. I know I'm dating myself right now, but it started an entire franchise, and it's one of my family's favorite franchises of all time. Friday the 13th came out uh, 1980. Now, yes, it did not have the original Jason Voorhees in it until the very, very end of the film. And, of course, spoilers are always ahead, so I don't even know why I have to warn you guys. But the mom is a killer in this one. Kevin Bacon, one of the first movies that he was in, enjoys a a pretty decent death in the film, but it kind of starts the whole summer camp. People are, you know, teenagers are having sex and this is terrible. And Mm -hmm. there's a mad person in the background that for some reason hates sex. So he's going to murder everyone that's having sex. (laughs) (laughs) And that's kind of like the basis of just about every Friday the 13th film. And of course, as they go on, they do progress in part two. It is Jason in Friday the 13th part three. He finally gets the hockey mask. And eventually he ends up going to space, which by then I think everyone was pretty much over it. (laughs) (laughs) So still, it's it's a fun, campy franchise. And uh, that is my list for movie anniversaries. It's a good one. Thank you. I'll start with the 20-year anniversary of a movie that I really love. I think everybody that has seen it loves it. And that is almost famous. It I can- am a golden god. Yeah! Uh, sort of bio- uh, autobiographical. Yep. Because he did write for Rolling Stone magazine when he was a teenager. Great soundtrack. Great cast. Billy Crudup. Uh, Francis McDormand plays sort of the high strung mother. Oh, that's right. I forgot you. Kate that. Hudson's the Penny uh, Penny Lane. Uh, the young, the young man, I don't know his name. He hasn't really been in a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Philip Seymour Hoffman plays the mentor, uh, anti-establishment mentor. That's kind of helping this kid. Uh, it's just a great movie, great soundtrack. I believe the soundtrack won a Grammy. So if anything, if you haven't seen that movie, watch it for the soundtrack, but it's also just a really cool coming of age story about a, a a teenager going on tour with a band that's on the rise on the, on the cusp of, of being big. So excellent movie, 20 year anniversary, almost famous. Now let's get in 1995. I got three movies from 1995. It was a great year, 25 year anniversary. We'll start with the usual suspects. Mm. For those of you who have not seen the mystery, uh, seen the usual suspects, It's a mystery thriller directed by Brian Singer. It focuses on this con man named Verbal Kent, played by Kevin Spacey, who, you know, he does this. the, the, The entire movie is sort of flashbacks to this group of um, criminals meeting, getting together and doing this job. And it's basically verbal and the, in the police station, which has Chaz Palminteri, who's great in the movie. Fantastic. Um, just sort of talking about it. And then obviously I won't spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but there is a huge, huge, reveal at the end of the movie that it, the first time you see that movie it's just it's mind-blowing it's life-changing it's like uh what is it uh six element fifth, yeah whatever fifth element fifth, no no six cents. six cents that's it yeah like that kind of yeah I, I would agree with that it's it's you know you're the whole time you're trying it's it's a who done it you're trying to figure out who's sort of the 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 bad guy and uh gabriel byrne chaz palm and terry Kevin Pollock, Spacey, Benicio Del Toro, Stephen Baldwin's great mm-hmm. in it. So if you haven't seen The Usual Suspects, check it out. Real real quick, I yep. uh, also a little fun fact about the movie. So Brian Singer, besides the person who is revealed at the end to be the bad guy, did not let the rest of the cast know who they like who, who was. So. Kaiser Soze. Yeah. 
So next casino, and it's interesting, you know, 95 was a great year for Robert De Niro. Uh, the next two movies I'm going to talk about both had uh, Robert De Niro in it. We'll talk casino. Uh, Martin Scorsese directed it. Uh, I love Martin Scorsese. My, he's, you know, him and Tarantino are probably my, my favorite directors. Anything that either of those guys make, uh, I watch. But great thing about this movie is it was based on a novel uh, called casino uh, love and uh, love and honor in las vegas i think was the name by nicholas pelegi so what's important about that nicholas pelegi also wrote the book that goodfellas was based on as well so you know scorsese found this this writer who created these really great books and he made two masterpieces yeah. based on uh, Nicholas's work. It was the eighth collaboration between Scorsese and De Niro. Um, you know, the cast, De Niro, Pesci playing Nicky Santoro, uh, Sharon Stone, obviously great. James Woods mm. as the fucking sleaze bag. Golf course. Co yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just the whole, um, you know, Ace, Ace Rothstein kind of coming up, the, the gambler who becomes the, you know, the, the own, uh, the, the runs the casino with his gangster buddy. He's trying to go clean. Nicky Santoro wants to turn, you know, Las Vegas into the wild, wild west. The movie's a little long. I will say that it gets a little long at times, but there is a scene in this movie, Nicky Santoro, and I believe... I don't know the guy's name, but he's in office space. The guy with the glasses and the mustache. And they're sitting in Sam Rothstein's house. So Nikki has to kind of stay. They have to sneak. Oh, he's in. the banker. Yeah, the banker. They yeah. have to sneak him in and out of the house. Nikki out of the house because the FBI is watching him. Yeah. And Nikki gives this banker money to invest in something. And whatever the investment was, it starts to lose money. Mm hmm so he meets with him at Sam's house and he's like, listen, I, I got to get my money back. And the guy's like, well, Nikki, that's, that's not the way it works. And he says, listen to me, either you give me my money back or I'm going to crack your fucking head open. <laughs> and then hopefully right about the time you're coming out of your coma, I'm going to be getting out of jail and I'm going to crack your fucking head open again. <laughs> Cause I'm stupid. And that is That's one funny. cause I'm stupid. And that yeah. is one of the funniest fucking lines of that movie, really of any movie, but you know, just, just an outstanding movie. Love casino. Most people have seen it. If you haven't, you got three hours, check it out. You'll love it. Last one is heat. Uh, Michael Mann, not a huge Michael Mann fan. Same. You know, I don't I don't want to turn this into a Michael Mann bash session, but every one of his movies are like dark and grainy, you know, Miami Vice. Um, he just, you know, he makes good action movies just visually. Yeah. Like the way he films the movies, they're they're not great. Obviously, he Pacino De Niro, but there's also a lot of other great cast members. Val Kilmer's in it. John Voight's in it. Mm -hmm. Love John Voight. Tom Sizemore is in it. Tom Sizemore when, Tom when, Sizemore. when he's fucking clean or at least, you know, taking it Ish. easy with the drugs. <laughs> he is an outstanding actor. Very underrated. Ashley Judd's in it. A young Natalie Portman plays Pacino's stepdaughter. Right. Hank Azaria is in it as, as the boyfriend uh, right. the, of Val Kilmer's. Well, the, the, he's, Val Kilmer's wife's cheating on him. Danny Trejo. Yeah. Tone Loke is in it. He, he's one yeah. of the cops. So it's, you know, it's, it's a classic cops and robbers movie. Yep. And it's sort of, you know, I'm going to do one last job to get out kind of thing. Right. And, you know, Pacino plays Lut Lieutenant Vincent Hanna, I believe his name is. De Niro plays Neil McCauley. Look, you know, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, one of the, you know, two of the greatest actors that, that we have, they were in the Godfather two together, but they were never on scene together at the right. same time because they were paralleling Michael and Vito Corleone's lives. So this was the first movie that they were in where they actually shared scenes together and they didn't have much scene time together. No. They had the, basically in the middle. 
mm-hmm. when they meet at the coffee shop and talk. And at the end, when they have sort of their standoff, the, the climax of the movie and the conversation between Pacino and De Niro halfway through the movie, when they're in this coffee shop, when it's these two guys who everything that they are against each other, 100% everything you know the cops just trying to stop the robber the robbers just trying to get get away from the cop and they just have this exchange where you know basically they tell each other they like each other they respect each other but uh you know if it comes down to it they they're not afraid to to take each other down Mm. and it's it's phenomenal i mean you know this movie's 25 years old so i was like 12 when it came out and i remember i actually went to the movies and saw heat and uh it's a movie that it and it's another one that's a little bit long great action great story great flow de niro's great pacino's great val kilmer is great he is awesome and, and wasn't charlie's there and his wife no ashley was, judd was ashley his wife judd, that's right that's yeah right. Oh, i love her yes so if if you know if you have not seen Heat, check it out. You will love it. It's a great movie, and uh, that's my list. Yeah. Have you seen Den of Thieves on Netflix? You need to watch Heat. So Den of Thieves, it's not a ripoff of Heat. It's the closest thing to Heat that we've had in the last very, very much years. so. Especially, you know, obviously the scene where there's the street fight, the, right. the, the street shootout. Den right. of Thieves and Heat's very similar. So yeah. if you've seen Den of Thieves and you haven't seen Heat, watch Heat. If you've seen Heat and you haven't watched Den Boom. of Thieves, watch Den of Thieves because exactly. you'll love them both. Exactly. So definitely be sure to check that out. Awesome. Gerard Let's Butler see. is in Den of, Thie- Den of Thieves. And for those of you that listened last week, Nicole <laughs> thinks he's a mouth, mouth breather. <laughs> Total mouth breather. <laughs> I'm to Nicole. <laughs> I loved him in Gladiator, which yeah. we didn't mention, but that's, not that's Russell Crowe. Crow. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. We're, we're the most imperfect <laughs> pop culture podcast on the planet. We're notorious. <laughs> we're, we're, we're definitely not perfect. <laughs> and we, 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 we like it that way. Okay. So funny. <laughs> now you know how much I, how little I know. Um, well, now I'm trying to figure out if you hate Russell Crowe or Gerard Butler. <laughs> no, no, no. no, it's definitely Gerard Butler. I love Russell Crowe, Crow, obviously. Um, so a few that I have were um, Seven came out in 1995. Nice. Coming yeah. up on 25 years. Um, directed by David Fincher, mm-hmm. who was uh, featured in Aliens 3, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Zodiac. Um, known for his psychological thrillers, so Seven was not much of a leap for him. Um, he also did Fight Club, right? He did. Yes, yeah. he did. You yes. Sure? Yeah, and uh, yes. and the social yes. ne- and the social network too. Yes, he yes, did. yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Making a sequel to Social Network, by the way, I just saw. Mm-hmm. There, really? yeah, that's going to basically. Aaron Sorkin's writing it, David Fincher's directing it, and it's basically going to highlight the corruption of Facebook and, you know, social media and the way that social media is impacting our lives and things like that over the last 10 years. Oh, know, yeah. I don't know if, ignorance is bliss. I don't know if I want to watch yeah, that. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> I thought you said it's a comedy. I'm like, fuck no. Yeah. Well, it depends on who you are, I guess. Yeah. Like, I'm fucking, one of those people that's not on social media. Like, I told you so. It's a fucking horror movie. Yeah, I know, no right? Shit. It is. They they use algorithms yeah. and all kinds mm-hmm, of shit to get you mm-hmm. locked in. It's ridiculous. Um, so anyway, it's about <laughs> two detectives uh, played by Brad Pitt and uh, Morgan Freeman um, who try to track down a killer yeah. who um, uses the f- seven deadly sins mm-hmm. as his kind of motif yeah. for killing. Um, the killer played by um, Kevin Spacey. <sighs> And uh, Ter- so terrifying. It is very terrifying. I remember this when I was a kid. Yes. I was like, mm, I don't know, five then. So, terrifying. yeah, no, when I was watching it, I was just like, who let me watch this first of all? And second of all, is this even real? Because you, you're watching this stuff and you're just like, my God, he takes it to the next level, though. It's yeah. very gory. Oh, yeah. It's it's something that uh, when you watch it, you're just like, I can't see that. Yeah. So uh, it was really, really good, though. Gwyneth really Paltrow good. plays the wife. His wife. Mm-hmm. Great. Pregnant. Yep great yep love her um yeah it's a very very hitting movie i think yeah um so that one was pretty great and so there's also 
is kind of switching gears here. Home Alone, 1990. <laughs> one of my fucking favorites. Oh, absolutely. All time favorites. What, stands, my, stands the test of time, yeah. too. It does. It really does. You know, a lot of these classics, they really don't go anywhere. Every single year, you know, you, your holidays come around and you watch it. I'll yep. be watching 100%. it. 100%. Yep. Home Alone's on, I'm watching, even if it's like July. Yeah, <laughs> like it I doesn't have too. to be just Christmas. Oh, yeah. you don't watch Hallmark TV. in July? <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to start. <laughs> Nineteen ninety. So that one's that one's up there too. Thirty, 30 years. Thirty years. Can Jesus. you believe that? I feel old. By the way, when we go through these, I feel really fucking old. Yeah. Who are you telling? <laughs> uh, director John Hughes, yeah. who did the National Lampoons, uh, Weird Science, Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Clubs, all the good ones, all the golden ones. Um, about a bratty kid played by Macaulay Culkin, who is um, Kevin. He, <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. Oh my God, Catherine O'Hare in that. I can't even yeah. tell yeah. you. And the dad, um, he just passed away recently. No. Dude. Yes. Uh, John, um, yes, the, the guy who plays the dad just passed John, away. Oh, man. Uh, Joe, no, not Joe Pesci. Josh, Joe Pesci. Pesci yeah. John yeah. Hurd. Is that John Hurd? He just he just passed away within the last month or two. That makes wow, sense. Did yeah. Huh. Yes, he did. All right. Uh, um, about a bratty kid who pretty much wishes for uh, terrible things when you do because you're a kid and you don't appreciate shit. Yeah. And he gets what he wants and regrets it. Imagine that. Uh, I have a teenager that does that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Two tiny ones that did the same thing. Uh, but yeah, the, this, this movie is a classic. Love it. Um, if you haven't seen it, which I doubt many of our listeners haven't, you should definitely watch it, especially around Christmas. Yes. Recommended, highly recommended. Then I have Toy Story, which came out in 1995, bawling my eyes out over here. 25 years old. Yeah. yeah. One of the OG yeah. animated movies, I think. Um, uh, especially Pixar too, right? It was. It was yeah. Pixar. Um, this was John Lasseter's debut. Okay. Um, he did Cars and Bugs Life. And of course, we can't forget the music by Randy Newman. The music is great. <laughs> God, the music's so good. It is. It gives you that kind of buddy comedy yeah i think randy newman did a lot of stuff on the major league soundtrack right at least the like the beginning song and the movie major maybe i don't know so i don't know the answer oh randy newman but he does he has those heartfelt songs where you're just like i got a buddy right here yeah you're my buddy friend very very (laughs) friend oriented you got a friend in me you got a friend (laughs) and it's got you know tom hanks tim allen don rickles jim barney it's got all the goods um, about toys who come to life while the children don't see. And I remember as a kid, when I was watching this movie, I was like, I wonder what they're yes. doing <laughs> right, right now when I'm in school. Right. You know, because yeah. you really thought you were captivated by this story. I mean, at least I was. Oh, yes. no, I was. <laughs> and like, I was 15, I think, because it was 95, right? 95. And even then, I'm like, what are my toys doing when I'm not home? Right. <laughs> What are they doing now? Yeah, especially if you just come home and you find one out of place, like, holy shit, it's real. Oh, my God. <laughs> so there's four Toy Stories, right? There's four of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which one are you throwing out? Ooh. I'm throwing out two. Ooh, wow. I don't like, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Toy Story 2. I'll say two as well. I don't, I don't think I was a big fan of the two. That's the one where he gets taken by the Al's Toy Barn guy. No, that's three, right? No, I'm pretty sure two was the one where that, then he meets uh, what's her name? Yeah, uh, Bill. Country chick. Yeah, yeah. What his little that girlfriend? Was, that was Al's toy barn. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Was she it? Was Al's yeah, because he barn. got in, he got in the uh, stuff for the yes. yard sale, and yep. then the guy took him. Then they oh, had to shit. save him. I'm getting them all mixed up. Yeah. Then maybe I do like two. I don't know. Yeah. Two. Two was two. I'll throw away. Three was the one where he gives the he gives the, he goes to college and gives his sister the little toys at the end all the no, toys. No, no, they, the, yeah, they go to the the fucking to the daycare name. first. Well, yes, but yeah. she come to find out she lives next door, right? Yeah, like something like that. Yeah, but the daycare shit was terrifying. That's the one where Michael Keaton plays <laughs> Ken. Oh my god! <laughs> and then I the big that. bear. Yeah. yeah, that one's honestly. I think that's my favorite. Is three. Yeah, especially but at the end, they're almost at the end. He goes go. to college though, right? And he yeah. gives his toys yeah, away. Yeah, I cried. Yeah, like he does. He does. I cried. Yeah. And four is obviously a fucking tearjerker, yeah, too. Yeah, four is a good one. I love that one. Jeez. I actually haven't seen four yet. It's four is te- really it, good. You it, should watch it. I, I want to. It's, it's not a tearjerker. I, don't want to. I, I saw it. So before I watched it, I saw a video of Tom Hanks was doing the final 
Like Tom Hanks was crying while he was doing yeah. the Aww. doing the voiceover for I'm it. I'm sure it was yeah. hard. Yeah, because they're not going to make any. Well, right. they they might. I don't know. We'll but see. But I mean, just like Forced you said, 20, 25 running, years. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they didn't, you know, and what I love about this franchise too, it's not like they were like back to back. Like we have no. to capitalize on this. Like it's almost like the, the timing was very well with Pixar. Like, all right, Tom's ready. Tim's ready. We got a great story. They didn't force or rush this. Like you see a lot of franchises yeah. trying to do and just try to capitalize real quick. So, I mean, the fact that we just got four, what, last year? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, you know, they, they spread out 25 years very well. Yeah, they did a good job. Great, well, great movies. There was a, a kind of a gap in the generations there too, though. Right. Because when right. We, we were seeing it, we were younger. Mm -hmm. And then True. all this technology came out and they were like, okay, we got to have more. I mean, right. you're still watching these older movies, right. but you realize like the value in kind of remaking some. Some are not so successful, but sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. Now we have technology and yeah, no, it's definitely time. And you know, the story and uh, they, they change the story up enough to where you're yeah. still satisfied. Sure. Still. Exactly. Absolutely. Or if you're 40, 50, or if you're five or six, you love them all. Oh, well, you yeah. can yeah. still enjoy. I mean, you exactly. know, listen, Pixar, Pixar all the really Pixar movies, you know, up all of them, very easy for children and adults seniors yeah. Right. right any any age of people to really be able to relate and, and enjoy those movies pixar oh, does, does a great job they agreed. do they make it adult enough and they also make it enough for the kids to enjoy yeah. and especially just covering so many just different you know ethnicities you know i mean coco good yeah. just gracious oh, I yeah. loved coco. awesome and i mean i'm hispanic but there are like tons of people i know that are not they're just like man coco's up there and then uh, what else coco's is? awesome it, it was. It was, and I, you know, I was, I was very, very that. late on the train. Yes, it is. That. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I was late on the Coco train. I didn't see it in theaters. No, I watched I it on. A, it I watched it on an airplane. Yeah, Did you? But yeah. Goodness, I thought it was gracious. great. It hit all the damn hard strings. I mean that. Huh, we'll have a pic we do need to have a Pixar episode for sure. No <laughs> doubt. Really we'll we'll save it for that. Yeah. One. Their their movies are art. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I had Edward Scissorhands, which is one of my favorite. I could say I could watch that at Halloween and Christmas. Oh, that easily. one is 30 years old, and we all know Tim Burton. We mm -hmm. all know and love his gothic fantasy and horror films. Mm -hmm. Beetlejuice, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Sleepy Hollow. I, I could continue. Mm. He's got so many. He's a pro at these. Um, about a man who was created by... None other than the one and only Vincent Price. Yes. And I can't remember his character name, but that's the actor. Yeah, I don't think he had a name. He was a no name. Right, right. <laughs> Just kind of like the he, creator, yeah, Dr. He, Frankenstein, if you may. Before Edward Scissorhands was even um, realized, I guess, he was already gone. Mm. So he had scissors for hands. I don't know why he thought that was a good idea at the time. <laughs> he, <laughs> he made hands for him, real hands, and then he passed away before he could attach them. Mm. So this poor guy is living in this castle who never dies. I don't know what that's about, but... It's almost like your modern day Frankenstein, yeah. but in like yeah. the creepiest way. Yeah, you it know. really is. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, a modern day Frankenstein. Yeah, poor thing. Yeah. I feel so bad for him. But he's he's one of those characters where he's so unsuspectingly gentle. Mm -hmm. Like he is in tune for someone who's been alone for so many years. He's in tune with you know, yeah, the social aspect is not there, but the feeling and the home and mm -hmm. the family, you know, those are all there, and he's very aware of them and anyway he captures your heart and he pulls at your heartstrings and i just love that movie he does it's, it's i do love that movie it's been a while since i've seen it but it's it's very touching it, it is. is plus it's johnny depp and shit her name's not coming my, my daughter's it's, gonna is it is it joan me. cusack no no no, no. it's uh from beetlejuice from Stranger Things. Why am I not thinking Why of her? Why am I? Oh, my daughter's favorite actress. Uh, Winona Ryder. Winona okay. Ryder. Yes. I have to edit that in. So I like acted like I knew it. Winona Ryder. <laughs> yeah. And Diana Weist is her mother, I think. Yeah. And the bad guy was uh, what? Um, uh, Hall. Uh, Mike, Anthony, Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony Michael Hall, Hall was kind of the, the dirtbag boyfriend slash, you know, pretty much the, the Johnny from Karate Kid. Yeah. That was uh, Michael Hall, and then who was uh, who was the dad in that? Or the parents in general? I don't remember. Because they stand out to me a lot. 
the scene that sticks out to me is when he's out there trimming the bushes. Right. <laughs> right. And then you can like form whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He went from bushes to yeah. human the hair, hair salon. Yeah. to dog hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or dog hair, then human hair, I think was the... Anyway, they, they just, he had this sex appeal too. I don't know what it was about all these homemakers, these <laughs> housewives that just right. loved him. But yeah, like he was the, who, they were curious about him. Yeah. They wanted to know more about him. You know, the one woman wanted <laughs> to have him. Yeah. Anyway, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, we have Clueless. 1995, 25 years. Great cast. I'm mad that I'm older than this film, but. Director was Amy Heckerling, yeah, mm-hmm. um, who directed Fast Times at Ridgemont, Ridge, Ridgemont High, um, A Night at the Roxbury. So quite a few that she's been known for. Mm-hmm. She um, This one was about a girl who falls in love with her stepbrother. Paul um, Rudd. Yes, I love Paul Rudd. Still looks so the same. At, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, he does, actually. Yeah, the dude never Jesus. ages. Um Cause he's the only one that really can stand up to her and tell her how life really is. And yeah. She's a spoiled rich girl yeah. who's above like everybody. She's been given the luxury of being, you know, most popular blah, blah, blah. There's so many films about that, but this one's the best. Um, and this one actually has, you know, her klutzy best friend who she tries to make over Brittany Murphy, the late Brittany uh-huh. Murphy. Love her. RIP. I do too. I really do too. I'm Rolling her. with the homies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so I don't know how many I gave, four or five. Anyway, I love them all. Those are good. Those are all good. I mean, there, there's been a lot this year. I mean, we could have ran down a whole entire gambit, but try to throw those honorable mentions out there. We are going to get to the latest segment of our podcast that we're going to start doing now with us internally and as well as we have guests. I'll let Saba kind of tell you what's going on with uh, – with our new our newest segment oh, recap. Yeah, so this is week two of Death is Not an Option. It's the new segment sort of game that we play where we draw and we have to pick one of the options. Death is not an option. You, you know, you can't say, Oh, I'd just rather die. Death is not an option. So that's that's what we're doing. Who's yeah. going who's going you first? You want to go first? I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. There we go. Go first. Yeah, I don't think this is really like one of those hard hitting like Death is not an option ones, but I have to choose between pizza or spaghetti. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't think death would be one of the choices anyway. But yeah. let me think. This was going to be pretty fast for me. Definitely pizza. Yeah. If I want my carbs, I want them in a pizza form. Yeah, that's yeah. right. God, yeah. Spaghetti. I, I do love some out. good fucking spaghetti, though. I well, do. of course. I can take a fettuccine. I can take anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say pasta. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely pizza. I love pizza. Go ahead, man. All right, all right. Let's see. Let's see here. All right. So I got be poor and homeless or rich, but have to have sex with old people every day. Ooh, now that one, uh, I would probably. I'm going to be rich and have sex with old people every day. I don't care. They're 80, 90. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'd much rather. I mean, I've been broke. I do not want to be poor and homeless. No. Yeah, I'm good. Mm, yep. I'm good. I will I'm with you. Shut the lights off. We'll close the curtains. We'll we'll figure it out. Have a you lot of- You still get laid, man. Exactly. A lot of liquor involved. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep the It'll lights off. It'll just be nice and squishy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. <laughs> What'd you get? I feel like I, I actually picked- want to leave the pause in the episode. I really feel like I should have picked a better one. Suck toes mm-hmm. or a belly button. <laughs> So am I, what, what about the belly button? You got to suck the belly button. I'm sucking the belly button. Bro. Oh, God. Dude. Do you have any idea what goes into a belly listen button? Listen to me. <laughs> feet are fucking disgusting. Ooh, not a feet fetish, huh? No, no, no Tarantino here. <laughs> You'd uh, rather do the belly button. I don't want to do either of them, man. <laughs> I don't, I, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, it's not like, oh man, God, I can't believe this dude wants to suck on belly buttons, <laughs> right? Like, it's like, would you rather suck toes or, or a belly button? So death is not an option yeah, and I'm going with the All belly right. button because, with the belly button. because I hate feet. I fucking I hate them. I, got you. I hate my it's, feet. It is a different kind of sweat, but I tell you what, the belly button definitely gets a different kind of sweat too. Oh, I, I can only imagine <laughs> I don't know from experience. Nicole, just, do you want to pick another listen, one? Listen, I don't necessarily, I'll just blow bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. I think, I, I think, 
Oh, Lord. <laughs> Prepare yourselves out there. Um, ahem. Never come or come in two seconds. Please give me two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Please give me every two yeah. seconds. Because yeah. if you don't come, what's the point? <laughs> Would you rather just be constantly well, okay, coming? Okay, hold on a second now. I'm a female, not a male. Yeah. There is a difference. So... If it were a male, then I think the answer would be obvious. But as a female, yeah. never, never coming, yeah. it's not quite as unusual I as can, you think. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. That, that makes more sense. I, I can see that. Yeah. Are, are you doing another one? No, no, I, th- I think no, we're good I on think that. No, I think my pizza and spaghetti was a little inappropriate for what you guys did, so I just <laughs> she had a chose yeah, another one. <laughs> yeah, man. But now Fucking I'm trying to think about this. Thing, but would you just belly be buttons. like, so it would just be constant just orgasms left and right? Yes, please. As a dude, I'm sure we're like, hell yes. Oh, yeah. Everyone's confidence would be awesome. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, you know, it gets messy. <laughs> Like, if you're just coming all over the place. You don't know the women uh, (laughs) (laughs) biology, do you? Uh, (laughs) Again, it's a lot different. It's a lot different than a male. No, yeah, we're talking about us, though, right? Like, I I, I would just, I would be like, you know, I don't know. It'd be like, you have to wear a poncho. Yes. So so it didn't say every two seconds. It said come in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I think he threw a wrinkle there, though, I and said, I so I, I gave my death is not an option. I just <laughs> I wouldn't want to just be coming all over the place. I don't know. I, just, I definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to veto that. I'm yeah, sorry. I, I mean, I w- here's the thing. Like, I would, right. but like, you know, if you're like, I got to work something, I got to make money. <laughs> You know, like imagine just, I couldn't. Two seconds is awesome then, right? All right, done. (laughs) So stay tuned. We do want to hear more of your opinions on, you know, our latest edition of the show, which is called. Death is not an option. Death is not an option. (laughs) I don't know why I keep messing with that. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on our little podcast adventure for movie anniversaries. As always, be sure to check out our website, popculturepodcast.com, for all blogs, videos, podcast episodes, of course, and more entertainment news coming your way. Courtesy from our good friends over at Zibster, that is Z-I-B-S-T-E-R, making some of the best websites out there on the planet, as well as taking care of your SEO needs. Huge shout out to the man that helps keep us out of jail on a weekly basis, that is Andrew Newman, attorney at law taking care of all your civil, criminal, and traffic court needs in North Carolina. You can find his website at attorneynewman.com. And, of course, the Believe Podcast Network for hosting our podcast as well as Saba's podcast. Saba, take it away. Uh, Luke Crocker and myself, we do a weekly sports podcast called The Water Cooler at WC Sports Pod, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go on, like, and follow us. We're available on all your streaming platforms. Uh, I, you know, iTunes, Google, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. I mean, anywhere that you get podcast content, you can find us. And we're available on the Believe Podcast Network. There you go. Go check us out. Like, subscribe, follow. Nicole, Saba, thank you all for... Another amazing episode. So good to have you You're back. You're welcome. You're very welcome, world. <laughs> Bringing brownies and rosé and all <laughs> kinds of shit. And, uh, you, you know, I don't have much more to say. Thank you for listening to all our international fans out there. I don't know how you say it in German. Ich liebe dich. I love that. Je t'aime. Ooh, there we go. Te amo. And te we quiero. love you. <laughs> and muchos gracias. We're coming all over the place. <laughs> Every two seconds. Literally and figuratively speaking. <laughs> We'll see you next week. (laughs) Cheers, bitches. Boom. Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube. 
it's Michelle Beadle. That's right, the Michelle Beadle. You're welcome. You love talking about sports. I love talking about sports. You know the only thing cooler than talking about sports? Sports! And right now, all your favorite sports are on Sirius XM. I'm talking every NFL game, every game from the NBA, NHL, MLB, every NASCAR race, golf major, major conference college sports, and all the top games in the WNBA. If it gets your heart pumping, it's on Sirius XM. To start your free, free, free trial of Sirius XM today, visit SiriusXM.com slash believe.